Let's do something a little different. Welcome to Fallen London. Well, hello everyone. I don't know if you're all aware of this, but uh, Sunder Sea is actually a sequel to this game. This is a web game called Fallen London. It's been around for a few years. I played it quite a lot a few years ago, but uh, because I couldn't play on the PC for a little while, I stopped. You know, it's been real fun picking this up again, to be honest with you. So here we go. This is Fallen London. I've created a new character, Humperdinck von Snodgrass, to tie in with our Sunder Sea game. And I'm going to play this through this episode. And if you guys like this, I will pick this up from time to time, just on occasion, and play this, just for a break of Thunder Sea, because by the looks of it, that season is going to take a little while. So here we go. I'll read through this, and uh, let's play through the game and see what happens. Welcome to Fallen London. Hello, delicious friend. This is the story of your adventures in Fallen London. Every step gives you a choice. Every choice unlocks more stories. Make your first choice below. So, okay, so let's um, let's do this. It's a little bit of a tutorial. It doesn't seem to hurt. Let's give it a go. Choices and qualities. Choices are how we keep track of the choices. Qualities, rather, are how you keep track of the choices you've made. Gaining qualities unlocks more choices in turn. You'll see this in action below. Now click onwards. So a living story will begin soon. You have started with a quality called A Stranger, which has just changed to level 1. This will unlock more stories. We have told you something important. Unjustly imprisoned. The view from your cell is magnificent. Fallen London, far below. You've come so far, and you're so close. No prison can hold you now. To find out who you are and why you're here, escape from prison. So we can recall where you, where you are. Or we can concentrate on escaping. Let's recall where we are. A cavern the size of Europe. And a prison in a stalactite clinging to its roof. The lights of fallen London glimmer at the edge of the dark cave sea like a handful of dropped jewels. During the day, when Londoners light more candles and gas lamps, the jewels are much brighter. But above you, in the cavern roof, phosphorescent artificial stars are always visible. Deep dark, marvellous. And now you need to get out. This choice has increased your watchful quality, which me measures how perceptive and intelligent you are. So, let's move onwards. Concentrate on escaping. A plan forms. It's a half-mile fall from the barred cell window to the dark waters below, but a supply dirigible brings food to the prison every day. It passes directly below your window, and the mortar which holds the window's bars in place is old and rotting. If you can work them free. So, you're preparing for a, for a daring escape quality has increased to one. When it reaches four, you can escape. Your a stranger quality is gone. Welcome to the world. Our... Uh, all of our stats have increased to four. Shame that. I was hoping that one would increase to five, but never mind. Okay. How will we get through the bars? Lady? Lady? Okay. Did I pick the wrong picture? Am I going to get a picture at all? Let's just reload this. I'm not going to get a picture at all. It looks like it's a tiny bit broken. I'm a shadow and dangerous, shadowy and dangerous lady. Never mind. I'll fix that later on. It doesn't really matter. You're a watchful lady. The jailers use work gangs of prisoners to expand the prison tunnels. If you spot an overlooked hammer and chisel, you're a persuasive lady. You don't really know whether the jailer is male or female under its thick hood. You're not even sure if it's human. But you are very charming. Perhaps you can persuade it to give you a little gift. You're a dangerous lady. Rats here sometimes use tiny pickaxes, even minute sticks of dynamite, to make their tunnels. If you grab some of their tools, you're a shadowy lady. Steal a jailer's iron-tipped cudgel right out of its belt. Hmm. Let's go dangerous. 
got the little swine. You dash the rat against the walls of the cell and scratch away at the mortar around the bars with its tiny pickaxe. It's not easy, but it's better than your bare hands. And at last the bars are loose. So we succeeded in a dangerous challenge. That means our dangerous stat has increased and our preparations are complete. Escape from New Newgate Prison. With a final struggle, you wrench the bars free, squeezing hastily through the window as the supply dirigible approaches. You pause briefly on the narrow ledge outside, then leap onto the upper surface of the dirigible, sliding several alarming feet before you get grip. You are free. So now we can escape to Watchmaker's Hill, where the dangerous work is. We can escape to Spite, where the shadowy activities take case. We can escape to Vale Garden which uh, is the area for persuasive stuff, and we can escape to Ladybones Road, which is the place for watchfulness. Now, as we've done Dangerous, I'm going to go for the Dangerous route, so I'm going to escape to Watchmaker's Hill. Watchmaker's Hill. The dirigible spiles slowly down over the smouldering lights of fallen London. The cavern breezes of the Neath pluck at your clothing. Watchmaker's Hill is a darker patch off to the east, beyond the hill, a sudden fungal glow rises from Bugsby's marshes. You clamber, clamber down the side of the gondola and drop silently from the dirigible as it passes over Watchmaker's Hill Observatory. We've moved to a new area, Watchmaker's Hill. Every real-time week, wounds and other ills will decrease and the public's memory of you will fade. You've just arrived in fallen London. You should look for somewhere to live. You have completed your daring escape. You're free. You are now a tough... This is a training profession that will increase your dangerous every week until you're ready for something fiercer. Onwards. Now you're free. You have a large, larger list of choices. When you click onwards, you'll see a deck of cards. Click on the deck to get a surprise story. Click the choices below the deck for a more predictable experience. The more you play, the more you will unlock. Okay, let's go. You stored a little something to buy supplies down here, and, your j and the jailers never found it. Sell your magnificent diamond at the bazaar to raise funds. You should sell your manacles and whatnot too. Okay, onwards. Let's start the game proper. All right, this is the main game screen. Okay, now we have a number of tabs in here: story, messages, myself, bazaar, next, help. Deal with those later. This is the card deck. This is where random chance happens. Okay, so random events, new storylines opening, um, bits and pieces like that. If, say, your suspicion skill, which, uh, your suspicion stat, which is um, how much the authorities are looking after you, or your nightmare stat, which we're all aware of from Sunless Sea, gets too high, we get extra cards in here. If we've done certain actions, we get extra cards in here. And they pop up from time to time. So we'll just pick one of those. Avenge a struggling artist's broken heart. So let's have a quick look there. The rejection has driven him to an artistic frenzy. He needs a thimble of blood from one who betrayed him to complete his work. The colour, he explains, red-eyed. The colour must be true. So, we can teach the heartbreaker lesson. We can give, basically stab him. Or... We can just give him some of our blood. In either case, we don't really have a good chance of doing it. So I, I'm reluctant to do it. But let's do it anyway, just as an example. So, high risk challenge. The colour is true. You push through the audience. Their laughter steals. The heartbreaker's last quip falls like a stone into a well. Your knife flashes. You give him a mark to remind him of his betrayal. And leave with your blade darkened. The struggling artist adds the blood to his palate and grins. The heart's own colour, he whispers, as his brush thrashes across the canvas. The painting is snapped up by a surface collector, and the artist grants you a cut of the proceeds. So we actually succeeded. We had a one in five chance. We've done pretty well. So our danger has increased, and we have eight surface currency, which is an item in the game. Let me just have a quick show of those quickly. So if we look at myself, let's ignore the broken bits there. We'll try to get that sorted out before we get back to it next. 
These are the items we're wearing. We're wearing a prisoner's mask, which increases our shadowy by one, which is one of our stats. Um, ragged clothing, which decreases our persuasive by one. Wrist manacles and ankle manacles. Um, we don't actually have a lodging at the moment. And these are items that show up when you look at somebody's profile. Now, if you have a, a fallen under the couch, you might look at this. So let's set those quickly. So we are dangerous and a mantelpiece item. Let's wear it, put the mask on. We're dangerous and mysterious. And down here, we have the qualities we picked up through the game so far. So our profession is tough. And these are the, uh, the, the, the bits and pieces we picked up as part of the story. So our new arrival five, homeless one, that will go away when we get home. Fully formed, sitting in a full London, that's, uh, that's our tutorial stuff. And here are the items we picked up quickly. So surface currency was, uh, from the last action. And a magnificent diamond we got, uh, earlier on. Now we can sell that stuff. This is our sell screen. So these are the items we have. We can sell an item. Sell, transfiction complete, 40 pence earned. We now have 40 pence here. So that's zero echoes and 40 pence. So let's sell some of this stuff up. Let's sell the manacles. Plenty of metal in them, they're worth a bit. Um, and Let's keep hold of that diamond for now. I don't know if there's any use of it in the game, so let's hold on to it for a bit and find out. Okay, so let's move on. We've done the cards. Let's just flip up the next one just to see what it's like. A jewel thief needs an accomplice. Interesting, we might do that. But here, below, are uh, the, uh, the, the actions in this area that our stats and our actions and our qualities have brought up. So... Um, there is, for example, here, Tame the Undergrowth. The Landlord of the Medusa's Head wants a beer garden. Okay, so that's unlocked with Dangerous 2, and we have Dangerous 5. So if we go into that, we now have a new action. Tame the Undergrowth. The Landlord of the Medusa's Head wants a beer garden. He has a convenient spot picked out, but the ground is choked with sucking daffodils and other botanical predators. So, we can... We have two actions here, okay? We can actually do this. We can do the aggressive gardening, so the, uh, and that's a, a dangerous challenge. It's a straightforward challenge, so we have 100% chance of success. Same as Sunless Sea. That's likely to win. We can also talk to the landlord. The cheery, cheery man, the landlord of the head, is connected in alarming ways. Perhaps you could engineer a conversation with him. That sounds interesting. Let's give it a go. A skeptical grunt. Let's talk later. You've gained one rendezvous with the cheery man item. This has opened up a new story for you. And our dangerous has increased to six, so that worked well. Working with the cheery man. The cheery man is a muscular, grim, smiling landlord of the Medusa's head. In the corners of the bar, they gossip about his feud with the last constable. So, we can ask the cheery man about the feud. Or we can find the last constable and ask her about it. Hmm. Right now, I think, let's, uh, let's talk to the cheery man. A word with the cheery man. The cheery man stands behind the bar, carving a pipe from a block of cherry wood. When you mention the last constable, his ready grin becomes a grimace. He thunks his knife into the bar and pokes a finger at your face. She's trouble, Glimshine. An endless pit of black, an endless black pit of misery. He masters himself, pulls out the knife, and returns to his carving. Watch out! She's a special constable, all right, but when the rest of them serve the masters of the ministry for public decency, she wouldn't go. Thinks that she, thinks she's the last honest copper in London. He shakes his head, and she's got a frost moth in her attic. About yours truly. Maybe I can help. He sizes you up. I need a fresh face from the surface, someone from outside. I'll be in touch. Let you prove yourself. So, a living story will begin soon. Now this is the, um, a lot of in interconnected actions that um, actually have a storyline behind them. And uh, this will later on give us quite large rewards. It's going to take a while to get through, but um, it's certainly going to be worthwhile. So... 
Um, yeah, our, our family law quality is now one, so that indicates an advancing story. We've chosen to aid the cherry man against the constable. Um, we're connected with criminals too. We have two intriguing go gossip, and we've completed our meeting with the cherry man. Moving on. So, we can have rowdy times, we can ambition, bag a legend. That might be worth trying. Knife and candle at the Go Gamecubers jo College. Department of Menace or Education. And we need to find somewhere to live. Lots and lots to do. Let's try this. The Jewel Thief needs an accomplice. Right. The Jewel Thief needs an accomplice. A Jewel Thief of your acquaintance has a job lined up. Apparently a charming young heiress has acquired a glim necklace from an admirer. A pair of bold thieves should have had little trouble stealing it. So this is a shadowy challenge, and my shadowy is very low, so that's a gives a forty two percent chance. And our watchful gives us a twenty percent chance. So let's try that. We failed. Caught in the act. You're rifling through a, the ladies' dressing table when the door burst open. You are suddenly face to face with a gentleman clad only in his long johns, gripping a long stemmed mushroom between his teeth. There is a long moment of mutual surprise. You recover yourself and leap for the window. The man hesitates, reluctant to expose the public to his underwear. An altruist, then. His opinions limited, he throws his mushroom after you. You have some choice criticisms for your accomplice afterwards. He departs chastened and empty-handed. You produce the mushrooms in your pocket. At least you'll eat. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, so I think at this point we need to concentrate on finding somewhere to live. So let's actually see what story is required to do that. Excuse me, just needed a quick drink there. Um, so we'll find somewhere to live. Now we can actually buy something from the uh, the bazaar, but I think we can actually get a storyline to get the basic um, housing. So let's give that a try. Find somewhere to live. You need an address, or the constables might scoop you off the streets for vacant vagrancy. Besides, it's cold out here. And where would you invite your friends to? So, okay, so we can charm our way into someone's home. We can steal whispered secrets to pay for the rent. That takes us to spite. We can learn whispered secrets to pay our rent, or we can earn rusty gold to pay our rent, which is dangerous work. And as that is our highest stat at the moment, let's go and do that. Okay, a brawler's work. The Medusa's head is the place to start. If someone won't pay you for thumping someone else, you can very likely thump them. Onwards. A rowdy times at the Medusa's head. Rat catchers, spider crushers, and monster hunters drink here. If you want to be anything on the hill, you'll have to prove yourself. So, we have a number of choices. We can wrestle a rat catcher, arm wrestle a clay man, uh, subdue unruly drunks and involve ourselves in a better class of violence. We can't do anything with the cheery man. We can't do this story. It's locked because we're lacking family and law. We have one. So, okay, we can't talk to him because we already have talked to him. That's fair enough. Now, we want Rosty Gold. So... These two are probably not worthwhile. This one will directly give us some rusty gold. So let's do this one. Let's bounce. You knock heads together until all the troublemakers are unconscious or have remembered their manners. We succeeded at a, a dangerous challenge. We now have seven rusty gold. So let's just spam that a little bit. Eight. Try this again. That's a bit random. 15. I want to do this until we get to say about 30. There we go. That was that. That was quick. Alright, so let's find ourselves somewhere to live. That's probably going to be enough. Rent a room. We don't have risk with secrets. Rusty gold will suffice. There we go. So. Well done. A place to call our own. You deserve somewhere better, of course. But this will keep you out of the cold. It's a big improvement on the prison cell where you were in such a short time ago. So we now have better lodgings. We've moved into an area at our lodgings. We've lost 20 rusty gold. we found somewhere to live. And apparently, meanwhile, here's some wallpaper for us. Let's have a quick look. Uh, 
There we go. Oh, very nice. Hmm. Oh, what a nice place to live. Back to this. Onwards. Right, okay, so this is our new home. Because we have a new home, we now can fill two cards and choose between them. Okay, so we can pass the cat, we can do a protector of cats, we'll try those in a minute. Um, in our house we can attend to matters of the heart, attend to matters of society and scandal, write letters, find new stories, we will definitely be trying that one down the line. Open the way to new parts of the city. That's going to be important. We will pick that up later on. And these inviter friends allow us to invite someone else who's playing the game to do things. And both parties, if the other person accepts, get bonuses. It's very useful stuff. But first of all, let's try this stuff. Pass the Cat. A wriggling delivery. The game of Pass the Cat has grown fashionable lately, despite the Duchess's displeasure. Someone has selected you as the next link in the unwrapping chain. So we can accept the delivery, or we can involve ourselves in an, in an elaborate strategy, which we have 3% chance of success. So let's accept the delivery, shall we? Muffled sounds. It's trying to eat its way out of the box. That's a little worrying. We now have one times a boxed cat. There we go. Pass the cat. We now have an extra option here because of that previous one. So let's do that now. The gently rustling box sits on your dining room table. At least two layers remain. Are you ready to play? Pass the cat. So we can pass it on to someone else. Or we can free the creature. And I'm just going to do this one quickly. This is, again is another one. I can now pass this on to somebody else. I don't actually know anyone with this character. So I'm not going to do that. So let's free the creature. You whip out a pair of scissors and plough hastily through the multiple parcel layers. The creature inside bursts free. Your eyes are full of brown paper and string, and you don't see what it is, but it gives you a nasty scratch on its way to the window. Farewell, boxed creature. So we've lost a boxed cat, not a great loss. We've gained a quality, magnanimous. We've gained a quality, connected to the Duchess. And we've gained a quality, wounds, one. The scratch on the way out. So... These two are great because they're going to open up stories. If this gets high enough, I think the character can die, but it also opens up other new stories. There we go. That was good. Nothing new there. Okay. Let's, let's see what the protector of cats does. Cat chasing through this, this. Cat tracing is a tradition of fallen in London, but lately the practice has become a fad. Few are stupid enough to injure the cats, but the Duchess is disapproves nonetheless. So, we can rouse the city's residents in defense of the cats, or we can take to the alleys and defend the cats ourselves. So that's a persuasive one, and that's a dangerous one. So we're working on dangerous, let's do that one. Obviously, what's needed here is booby-trapped fake cats. <laughs> See, this one explodes, this one actually bites, and this one bites and then explodes. Several noted cat chasers fall foul of your infernal designs, and the fashionable set soon find better uses for their time. The Duchess is pleased, as evidenced by the string of pearls she sends you. So our danger has increased, we've succeeded in the challenge, we've conne uh, connected with the Duchess has increased, and we have 18 moon pearls. Very nice. Okay, let's go back. We've got a few more actions left. And we've got about five minutes of the game, so let's go back to Watchmaker's Hill and do some stuff. Um, before we do that, though, Mrs. Plenty's Carnival is a place for raising um, connectivity. We'll probably look at that in a later episode if we come back here. Spite is for increasing um, shadowy. Veil Garden is for increasing persuasive. Lady Burns Road is for increasing... Watchful, and the House of Chimes is an area you can go to if you are um, what's called an exceptional friend. You can buy exceptional friend points with necks, which I bought some earlier on. And I don't think we're going to spend some of this episode, but if we come back here again, we probably will. Okay, so on to Watchmaker's Hill, because there's one more bit I want to do 
before we start, uh, before we end the episode, which is this ambition. On long evenings at the Medusa's head, where the monster hunters drink, they brag about the beasts they bagged. The Cantagaster, the Eater of Chains, the Spider Council, Jack of Smiles in his many bodies. Now this is a big story, and this, uh, it's very important for us to get through this story because it, uh, this will ha do an awful lot to help our dangerous stat. But no, okay, we've done all the rest of this, but no one tells stories about the Vake. The Vake, for whose head the department offers a standing reward of four million echoes. Four million. Okay, so find out more about the Vake. This is an ambition, a major storyline with enormous rewards. If you reach the end, once you've picked an ambition, it is very hard to change it. Choose carefully. You can find other ambitions in other areas via the travel button above. No, I definitely want to do this one, so let's move on. When the vake is mentioned, everyone goes quiet. No one has any boasted stories. Why? So, right, we now have a new story here. And with our, our, our last few moves, let's follow that a little bit and see how far we get. It's, gonna, it's not something you're going to do in one go. It's not something you're going to do with Dangerous 7 anyway. So let's see how it turns out. Okay, so you need to know more about the Vake to have any chance of finding it, but everyone at the Medusa's head is mumbling and staring into their beer. Demand answers! Sit down and shut up, you silly young pump. Uh, a drunken hunter is threatening to teach you a lesson unless you stop asking questions about the Vake. You'll have to show him the error of his ways. Alright, we have a poor chance of doing that, but let's give it a go nonetheless. We succeeded! It has been a good day for this. You trade blows until he goes down for a final time. He glares at you over a bloody nose and a split lip and begins to talk. He knows two things about the Vake. One, that it finds and eats everyone who boasts about hunting it. Two, that it's sort of leathery. But he has heard of someone who knows more. So, our Dangerous has got a good boost and our Ambition Bag of Legend has increased to two, which gives us another step of the story. So, deep in Bugsby's marshes lives the last man alive to see the Vake and talk about it. So, we can't do that because we need more rusty gold. So, okay, so we go back. We have two, um, two actions left, but let's see, first of all, if we can actually buy some rusty gold. Now, we've got 11, so we only need 9. And I think Rusty Gold is here. Yes, it is. No, that's a Copper Cypher Ring. Uh, Let's just run through these quickly. Various items you can buy in the game. They increase stats, allow you to do other bits and pieces. In some cases, pets, always very useful. Um, exchange. That applied to Beeswax. A Rusty Gold. It costs three pence each. We need nine of them. Yet yeah, we have enough, so let's just buy that, and then we can advance the story a bit quicker. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty-seven pence. We have eighty. Job done. So going back to the story, this is now unlocked. We can go pick your way through the marshes. Bang! You now have one way through the marshes, and we've lost twenty gold. He sketches a map on the back of the bill and hands it over. It's not quite the guided tour you were hoping for. And with our one last action, let's go and bag a legend. You squash cautiously through the low, fungled hell of Bugsby's marshes. You skirt the poisonous spore pits, the sorrow spider hatching grounds, and the deep sinkholes marked on your map. And an area marked simply, you don't want to know. So we have a high-risk challenge, so there's a 16% chance that we'll actually get there. If we don't, something interesting might happen. Let's find out. You give up for now. You're going in circles. Your clothes are soaked. Your hair is matted with spores. Your boots are full of mud. You hope it's mud. The map is sodden and beginning to tear in several places. You turn back. So we didn't make it this time. But never mind. Right, well that's my actions used up this time round, and 30 minutes has just passed, 
So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to end it here. We will be back to Sun the Sea next episode. And we'll play a few episodes. If you like this, please put a shout in the comments. If people do like it, I will play this occasionally. Now this is episode 16 of Sun the Sea, so let's think about looking at it in episode 30. You never know. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I've been Simon Parsons. This has been Fallen London. Thank you and good night.